Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen and I'm gonna show you today how I made this baby shark cake. And if you see me using any tools or supplies you can use, if you check the link in the description below, it should be able to help you out. I started by printing out a picture of baby shark, the do 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 baby shark, not the baby shark big show baby shark. So the, the OG baby shark, if you will. I rolled out some white gum paste, really nice and thin, but not too thin. I want it to go onto the side of the cake, so he's okay to be pretty thin. And then I realized I don't want to outline the whole baby shark in white. I want him to be all one level because I was planning on stacking the layers of the different colors, but then I was like, no, no, that won't look as good. So I cut out his white belly with his mouth and then trimmed that out of the white gum paste. I laid it on a paper towel and I'm just going to start building off of that. Now, I get this question all the time. Can I use fondant for this? You definitely could in this situation. This is going to go onto the side of the cake. And so it doesn't have to be freestanding. It doesn't have to support itself. For, so if you have fondant, go for it. All right, back to my shark here. I had cut out the white part, which means I was left with the yellow leftovers. So I am cutting those out now. I just trim them out, trace them out on my yellow gum, gum paste that I rolled out. And I'm just matching it up to the white as I trim and go. And then it just kind of all comes together. I'm not attaching anything yet. I am just leaving it just kind of against itself. Because as you see, I'm going to start taking the pieces and then working further with them. So I have the white, uh, the round circle cutter there. I matched it up to the eye. It's a little too big, but it's nothing anybody's going to notice or even worry about. So I hold it up, cut out the circles. Now I'm going to cut out the mouth of the, of the um, shark, trim that out of the belly there. Because again, I want everything to be one level. I don't want anything sticking out too far. I use that same white since I already have it. I may as well go ahead and make his eyes. So there you go, fill in the eyes. And you can see the hole now where the mouth is gonna go. I have some maroon colored gum paste. It's like a burgundy even that I'm going to use for the main part of the mouth. I trimmed away the tongue as you see in the template because I always cut up all my little templates here. And now I'm going to use a big circle cutter to just cut out a nice red for the tongue put it onto that, but I don't want it stacked, so cut it out, and then it will match up nicely when I put it into place. Just watch. You stick the tongue in. See, it sits in there beautiful. The rest of the mouth, lovely. Loving it. Fix it up. Tweak it a little bit if you need to. See? All coming together. Again, I'm not connecting anything with water yet. I'm still, you know, cutting and fitting. I'm using a smaller cutter that I matched to fit the black of Baby Shark's eyes, so cut out those parts of the white. Get some black gum paste, roll it out the right thickness, make two circles, stick them into place. And I, if you are unfamiliar with me or what I do, I use those two paint stirrers. I get nice fresh paint stirrers all the time. And I use them when I roll out my gum paste and fondant and stuff for these decorations in order to create a level thickness. I know a lot of the rolling pins, when you buy them, they have the little rubber band things that you stick on each end. They get in the way. I'm too lazy to take them on and off, honestly, because I just kind of do my own thing a lot. So I use the wooden paint stirrers. Now I am continuing on with Baby Shark's mouth. I have white gum paste rolled out super duper thin, and even though it kind of hurt my heart, I decided to do it this way. You don't have to. You could cut out from the maroon part where his teeth will go and then have a thick white that you fill it in with. I did decide to go with the real thinly, thinly rolled gum paste, trim out the teeth, and then place them on top. So I am layering. I kind of went against myself here, but I chose to do it, darn it, so I'm standing by it. I also gave him two little white circles on his eyes for little highlights. Fix the teeth. There you go. And you probably also saw that I was connecting everything with water, too. At that point, he's done, so go ahead and put water on all the seams and connect them. Now this is gum paste. I would recommend using gum paste for this part because this is the number of the child's birthday and I want it to be freestanding on top of the cake. So I took some blue, just some nice pretty blue. I cut out the number and he is two. Put it on top of some yellow gum paste again. Again, I want it to hold its shape. I want this to dry and stand. If you use gum uh, fondant for this, you're gonna have to add Tylos or CMC powder to make it work. Otherwise, it's not gonna work, okay? Now back to this. I put it on top of the yellow. I'm trimming it down so it's got a nice little highlight or little, you know, outline around it of the yellow. 
And now to make it more interesting, I am taking my X-Acto knife and I'm cutting little triangles out to make it look like Baby Shark went chomp and took a bite out of the number two. Like how cute is that? I wish I could say it was mine, but I did see it somewhere else and I thought it was adorable. So I am sharing it with you because you know what? It is adorable. So here it is again. I decided to take another little bite on the other side and it's adorable. So yeah, let it dry. I let it dry overnight. Okay, now I have my cake here. I had crumb coated it, stuck it in the fridge. I had mixed up some blue, tried to put it on the sides and it looked like caca poo poo. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it looked like garbage. So I scraped it all off. I made a new batch of icing and this is what I decided to do with it. I was unhappy with it too because I was trying to go for just a smooth coating and it's in the water, so I wanted. I decided to try this. I love how this came out. I did an ombre style, so I started with light blue, worked my way in two layers of light blue, two layers of middle blue, two layers of dark blue, and then as you can see, I'm just doing a loop-de-loop -loop kind of border around the bottom to finish it off. I just used a tip, and I just went up and down, up and down, and it's, as you can see, it's not perfectly even. You know, when, when you take a real good look at it, you'll see some little spots where it ain't that pretty. That's okay, it can either go in the back or behind our giant baby shark because he takes up a lot of space. Now, speaking of baby shark, I let him dry. You don't have to, again, if you're making him out of fondant. I forgot, I had to draw a couple little nostrils on him. And since he is gum paste, he is hard, so I had to put water on the back of him to get him to stick to my buttercream icing. I used, I made a crusting buttercream. So there you go, like already it's super cute, right? Now I'm gonna show you how I made some of the grass and seaweeds. This is gum paste because I did want it to harden. I did want it to hold its shape. I roll it thin, cut a long little slice with a point at the tip. If it's too pointy, just rip it off, whatever. And just give it a twist. Twist it up. That's it. Boom. You've got seagrass. Like, no, no skills involved here. You can do this. Once it hardens, see my number two is nice and hard. Stick it in there. Those pieces of my seagrass harden. Stick them in there. They stand up nice and perky. I've got two on either side, or, or one, excuse me, on either side of Baby Shark. Jumping back to this one, I decided to make them all the same size, so I trimmed it down. These are still soft since they were going onto the side of the cake. I decided I wanted to make more of them, which is why it's like some are hard, some are soft, jumping all over. Yeah, I just pretend like it all flows smoothly. And so yeah, I stuck two on either side. I felt like it, it looked a little bit better. And I also had a couple extras, so I put them all around onto the back of the cake too. I will confess, I do tend to neglect the back of my cakes. I feel like everyone should look at it from one side only, <laughs> but that's not the reality of the world, so I decided to decorate the back a little bit too. All right, I am taking some nice bright pink gum paste here. You could use fondant for this, no problem with this one. And I'm just smushing down my balls I made with a little, with my um, ball tool. I have no idea what that tool is called, I'm sorry. And just making a nice little divot, a little pocket in the center there. And I'm going to stick them on with a little bit of water onto my cake. And I'm putting them at the base of the grass. I put three on each side. Just a little bit of water again. Make some stick right in place. Do the same thing on the other side because symmetry always looks nice. I put a couple up top with the grass that's on top of the cake. You could always add more grass too. Like looking back, I'm like, oh, maybe I should add more. But, you know, hindsight, right? Anyway, moving on again, I decided to add some kind of, I don't know, coral or sponge or something. This is yellow gum paste. I rolled it out pretty darn thin, cut my two little wavy rectangles there, and I'm using two different size cutters to just randomly cut some holes into my yellow gum paste. I'm basically making Swiss cheese here. So once you have your Swiss cheese all pocked up, you're going to poke the little balls or the little circles out so it's nice and empty. And then just take it and, you know, kind of wrinkle it up, crinkle it up a bit so it's a little more three-dimensional. Stick it with your other decorations, and that's it. Like, again, this cake is not hard to do. This is, I think, a pretty easy one that has a really nice big impact. Now, I had rolled out some orange gum paste. Again, you could use fondant for this. I used a star cutter, just made a bunch of stars, stuck a few here and there. I'm putting one on the back of my poor neglected backside of my cake, throw in a couple of my pink little thingies, <laughs> sea creature thingies on there, and I'm finishing it all up with some white shiny pearls. Just stick them hither and thither all over the cake, wherever you like, work your way around, all the way around, back to the front, 
And there you go, like super adorable, nice and bright and colorful baby shark cake. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe because I find that helpful and we help each other. And I have a ton of other videos, so take a look at what's out there. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.